Good evening and welcome to Community TV of Santa Cruz. I'm Lou Tuosto and uh, this evening uh, we've got a great show with Let's Talk with Lou. Uh, I am always uh, so privileged to uh, feel like I'm privileged to be here to talk with uh, leaders in our community and once again we've got some uh, exceptional guests this evening and I'd like to welcome both of you to the show. Um, first of all, uh, Matt Wettstein uh, from Cabrillo College, uh, the president uh, currently, and you've been there for about two years now? Just under two years. Okay. Thanks, Lou. Okay. Welcome, yeah. and, and thanks for being here. Thank you. Uh, I, I think I, I, one time I looked at one of your schedules and uh, uh, to see what you were doing, uh, and, and I noticed that you were as busy as I've ever seen a president uh, be, uh, meeting, meeting with people and talking with uh, other leaders throughout the community, and so thank you for your commitment to our community through Community College, uh, the Community College of, uh, of Cabrillo College, uh, and that system is a wonderful system. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, Cabrillo, and uh, I, I went to Cabrillo, uh, my, do my daughters went to Cabrillo, my son went to Cabrillo, uh, my wife and her sister were part of the first graduating class from uh, the hygiene program. Hmm. My wife said she's going to wring my neck if I tell anybody uh, what year she graduated because it, then it dates her. But uh, anyway, she just retired as a hygienist. So anyways, uh, thank you for all the hard work you're doing at Cabrillo. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. Uh, and then we have another uh, a guest. And uh, Steve Snodgrass is currently the chief financial officer, uh, CFO, uh, at Granite Rock, one of our largest employers uh, in the county, uh, and Steve serves on all kinds of boards and committees, and I'm probably not going to read them all because there are so many. He's done so many things in our community, but currently, uh, you, uh, I guess you're, you're right now you're on the board uh, at, as the Cabrillo College Foundation, or excuse me, past president of the foundation, uh, Dominican Hospital currently serving on that board. Um, the Santa Cruz United Way Volunteer of the Year, uh, youth sports coach, um, done so many things throughout the community. And again, thank you for being here, Steve. You're welcome. Thank you. I hear you have uh, some, some sights on possibly running for a county supervisor position in Monterey as well, uh, down the road. And it's District 2, is it, in Monterey? It's just District 2, and currently I'm exp exploring a run uh, in 2022. Very good. Very good. Bring some great experience uh, if you... Uh, are fortunate to be uh, elected to that position because you've been on so many boards and committees and thank you for your service uh, to our community. Um, the reason a big part, of, I think, uh, in having Steve here for sure uh, is that uh, he's, you've got a tremendous amount of experience uh, with uh, something that um, I think we're going to be talking about exclusively tonight and that's uh, a bond uh, that will uh, be in front of the voters at, at a short time for Cabrillo and we're going to talk about uh, what bonds do and, and how they fund things and uh, the need that Cabrillo has for some of those uh, uh, monies that come in uh, on the bond if it, it goes through. And I, I guess we'll start uh, in terms of just uh, describing what a bond is uh, and what is it in terms of, uh, is it a taxation? Uh, is it an additional thing that comes on everybody's property tax? And, and, and again, what's the need at Cabrillo? Maybe we could start out with you. Uh, uh, in the beginning, uh, you know, uh, of our talk uh, as to how and why bonds are important to a, uh, to a college such as Cabrillo, uh, Matt. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, um, thanks for the opportunity to be here to talk tonight. The the main reason for bonds for a community college like Cabrillo is the we don't actually get capital construction dollars from the state. Um, our funding to operate as a college is used through um, property and sales tax, obviously, but uh, in terms of major construction projects and major upgrades to facilities, it really is incumbent upon the district, the college district, going out and asking voters to approve a bond, which is essentially a levy of taxes on their property value, the assessed property value for um, all property owners in the district. So, you know, an example is um, thinking of Granite Rock, which is one of the biggest property owners in the county. Uh, whenever we have a, a bond measure, Granite actually ends up paying a large, uh, larger share of property values to that bond because of the size of the, the property that they own throughout the county in, in North Monterey County. So for us, the, um, the need to make upgrades on a, on a facility that's getting to be 60 years old, we're celebrating our 60th year. Mm -hmm. So 60 years ago, our first class was admitted in Watsonville. Uh, and so some of those original buildings that were built with the first bond that got passed in 1960 um, are starting to show their wear and tear. So there's some of that need, and I'll talk a little bit more about the projects. But the bonds are there 
uh, property owners essentially are agreeing to levy uh, a tax, and usually it's a very small portion on the assessed value of their prop of their property because it's spread across the entire district. Mm -hmm. So, in terms of uh, uh, the the uh, the need, uh, and I'm sure that you, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more uh, uh, during the show. Uh, what, what kind of need do we have? Because people, when they drive through, at least when I do, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I think, wow, what a beautiful facility. Uh, you go by and you see just these pretty new buildings, at least where Soquel Drive goes right through. But um, what, what are we not seeing that need to be uh, improved? And when's the last time they had monies to be able to improve those things? Sure. Yeah, so uh, the way I refer to it is we sort of have a reverse curb appeal problem with Cabrillo because... Everybody, a reverse, yeah, yeah rever reverse curb appeal because usually when you think of curb appeal yes. for real yeah. estate, when yeah. you drive up, the, the place looks great, right? And so fresh coat of paint, relatively new buildings as yeah. you go through the, that SoCal Drive corridor. But it's the, the other parts of the campus that have those older facilities that were built with initial money from... Cabrillo coming into existence are the ones that are showing the wear and tear. Is that the last so, time we had money to improve? No. So the last bond we did was in 2004. So it's been a good uh, almost 16 years now since mm -hmm. our last bond measure. Uh, and a lot of what you see uh, along Soquel Drive was constructed with those dollars. So the visual and performing arts complex is an example of that. Those new um, student services buildings that are right bordering along Soquel Drive. Um, so it's the older facilities and the physical plant of the campus that are starting to, to show age. And an example of that, of a project that would get funded, uh, this summer we had a sewer line break underneath our cafeteria. Mm -hmm. So it's the 900 building where we house cafeteria operations, some student services, um, clubs that students belong to, the student government. Our food pantry for needy students is in that building. So a major sewer line break shuts down a building. You've got to get under there. You have to excavate. You've got to find out what's the problem with the sewer. And essentially what you've got is old 60-year-old piping. Um, in cafeteria buildings, you'll often find that if you're not very vigilant with grease traps, um, mm -hmm. you end up having to unclog those, uh, repair the damage, go back in and, and um, fix the ventilation for the sewer system. So all of that work was done. That's a $100,000 project, roughly, that we had to handle this summer in the span of about six weeks to get, get it done, get it open in time for the fall semester to come, uh, where we could have cafeteria operations going. And to our credit, the contractors who are local contractors came in and did the work, got it done two days before the semester started. Wow. So magnify that problem. Mm -hmm. Of all of that sewer piping, mm -hmm. wiring, cabling for Wi-Fi and internet and telephone access, digital stuff that you have in classrooms, uh, and you're running all of that physical plant infrastructure that's underground, sometimes it's overground, mm -hmm. but a lot of it is legacy from 1960s, early 70s era. So that's the so, last time we've had uh, any of uh, the kinds of things that we needed uh, 60 years ago, almost? Well, the, the initial buildings that are a part of the campus beyond SoCal Drive, sort of up the hill towards horticulture, which is also another new project on the 2004 bond. Um, but all of the campus interior, pretty much from the, the start of the hill upward to horticulture, is old aging facilities. And that's where the heart of our instruction is going on for science, English, social sciences, transfer preparation for students who want to go on for four-year degrees. So part of my job, I think, over the next six or seven months is to go around the community and say, look, if, if we're going to have learning spaces that are 21st century learning spaces for 21st century careers, mm -hmm. it's going to be um, a requirement for the local voters to support that. So if you think about the kinds of jobs that are in emerging in the tech industry and in science and medicine and healthcare, a lot of that preparation requires good science foundation, right? Good STEM mm -hmm. trainings. So science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Mm -hmm. And our science classrooms date back to that period. And so a lot of what you would design into new modern science buildings isn't there. The spaces are tighter. Ventilation systems aren't quite what they are you know, under code today. Mm -hmm. 
So, you know, my argument on particularly one of the big projects that we want to do with this bond is to go to the voters and say, if we want to train students for good science and, and tech jobs, they've got to have good foundations and lab experiences in 21st century lab environments. Sure. So that's a signature project for that bond. There's also some uh, work that we want to do in our, our uh, library for learning hub and tutoring and um, group learning for students that would take that library space and move it from a 1960s, 70s era space mm -hmm. where you had a lot of books, a lot of rows of, and carols of books throughout the, the library, to a much more modern approach to libraries that you see today. Uh, group learning spaces, modular furniture that can move around, mm -hmm. and areas where students can congregate and study together with technology so that you have the ability for them to learn in the social way that they learn today with technology. That's the kind of approach that we want to bring into that building as well. So. Okay. So we need to get up to snuff uh, in terms of just uh, coming up to uh, maybe what other, the, the other uh, junior colleges and community colleges are already doing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, I think we, we've, we've got the jewel of, uh, of the Monterey Bay, I always call a community college uh, by the name of uh, Cabrillo College. You know, it's one of the best learning institutions, I believe, in the state of California uh, for all kinds of stuff. But the Allied Health is, is ranked one of the best in the nation, mm -hmm. uh, the, the nursing program, the, the hygiene program. Um, it, it, and we've got the, the you know the, the other kinds of programs that are doing so well, but then we're lagging behind in terms of having the infrastructure to keep that going probably, uh, and to be able to go to the next level where uh, you know we can we can educate the kids that need to be educated in that might be able to go somewhere else. And these days too, especially um, you know they have such an ability to do things online. We hate to lose any students uh, because we've got the best I think learning institution, I believe, in the state right here. We need these things. It's been years, it sounds like, since we've had any of the kinds of monies that we've needed to be able to take care of the infrastructure. Uh, and what I'm hearing you say too also, uh, uh, Matt, is that um, even though you see that brand new facility on the front part of the school, that's a part of the school, a very small part of the school, comparatively so, mm -hmm. because our allied health and some of the other programs are, are, are part of the other older part of the school that needs a lot of work. Uh, it needs a tremendous amount of attention. And the money does not come from uh, you know, the, the, the general um, fund. It comes from taxpayers. That's the way those things get funded. That's, That's the way that they get done in other community colleges and other junior colleges. So it's nothing new uh, to the state of California. That's how we get those things paid for. Right. Um, so I think that's probably, if, if we can camp out there a little bit and talk a little bit more about that, because I wonder uh, if, our, if our listening audience, in fact, knows that to be true. They're thinking, well, you know, you've got, it's a community college. I pay my taxes er already. But, but that's for something different. Mm -hmm. That is not for the infrastructure. Correct. Correct? Correct. Let's talk a little bit about that. Cause, uh, and maybe we can, and you have already, but maybe we can uh, expand on that, because I think when, I, when our... When our folks go to the, the polls, they got to think, no, no, I want our school to remain as good as they are, do, do as good as they're doing, but then do a, additional, a, a, and we need that kind of stuff. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Yeah, what, um, one way that, well, first I want to say to the community and to you that the reason that, that Cabrillo has outstanding healthcare um, instructional facilities is because they were supported by a prior bond. Sure. So all of our, our dynamite institutional work that's been done to, to build those programs up has been because voters supported that activity in the past. So what does that mean? Right now, voters have, if they live in the district and they own property, mm -hmm. they have a tax bill that comes every fall, mm -hmm. and it tells them that there are outstanding bonds for Cabrillo College that are, that are be, still being paid off. Mm -hmm. and they're being paid off by the property taxes that those voters are, are paying every year. They'll also see school district bonds for K-12 districts and some special um, districts as well. Um, what we've done as a college is we actually went to the Board of Trustees back in uh, August and asked them to go out in the market and refinance that existing debt and capitalize on the low interest rates that are out there right now. So uh, the board took that action. We, we were in the, market, um, in the marketplace in September of this year, uh, and we, um, we, we probably had the best environment you could think of in terms of interest rate uh, reduction. 
So all of those existing debt lines that have been showing up on property tax bills for voters mm -hmm. have been based on an average interest rate of bonds that are out there for 30 years of about 4.8%. We went and, and basically bought all of those bonds back and refinance them at lower interest rates to 2.5%. So what does that do to the tax uh, so, uh, bill uh, for each of the average taxpayers out there? So average taxpayer, the way to think of it is, um, uh, I think the average assessed valuation home in our district, which includes North Monterey, Santa Cruz, a little bit of San Benito, is around 560000 for a house, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. for a homeowner. They're going to save about $164 on taxes throughout the course of that bond mm -hmm. getting repaid. Mm -hmm. um, and so what that means, and overall, the, the entire district, we're going to save taxpayers $29.5 million mm -hmm. over the course of those bonds. Mm -hmm. So by getting those lower interest rates, we're actually lowering the tax bills over time that, that people will be paying on Cabrillo bonds existing debt. So it was a really smart decision by the board to do it. By the way, Granite Rock um, is going to save something like 30000 on their property tax bills because they have so much property in the district. Mm -hmm. So uh, good deal for taxpayers. So I felt it was important as a board and a college leadership to go out there and make sure we were capitalizing on the low interest rate environment right now to be able to say to the voters, look, we're being good stewards with the existing debt structure that we've done gone out, resold it, and, and packaged it to be a much lower tax bill for folks before we even go out and ask again for any more uh, bond funding for uh, future projects. So I, I'm really happy with the board having done that with our leadership at the college doing it. Um, it's exciting. It's kind of an exciting environment, too, to go through that process of getting assessed by the, the bond rating agencies, Standard & Poor's and Moody's, both of which gave us um, the second highest um, credit rating that you could get as Beautiful. a local government. So, so it's showing responsibility for the, uh, with, with what you've been doing, uh, you know, by an independent agency. Uh, and so that that means a lot, uh, and, and I think that's always a question in people's uh, mind. Well, what are you doing with, with the money, and how are you managing it? And obviously, it's been managed very well. Mm -hmm. uh, you're you're doing some some really right things. Um, you know, you mentioned something uh, about refinancing. Um, and what would, do you know, if we uh, had this bond uh, pass, what, what would the interest rate most likely be? Sure. So we, we don't know uh, what the interest rate would be if we went out with a bond in March. So mm -hmm. let's assume, though, that voters approved it. Uh, and we would be asking for $274 million in bonds to be sold in the market to finance a set of projects that are on our priority project list. Mm -hmm. All of that's been um, determined through a facilities uh, planning process at the college over the last two years. So we've had internal stakeholders analyze all the projects that we're looking at, and then external input that we got from the community even before I got here as a, as a president on what are the projects that are important to voters and to local residents. Um, but if we were to go to market on that $274 million bond ask, it would depend upon interest rates in that environment in March mm -hmm. or April by the time we probably go to market. Uh, and then um, typically a district like ours or a local government will use a bank based in New York to be the bond seller. Uh, we use a bond underwriter, and we have a law firm out of San Francisco to make sure that all of the um, contracts are dotted I's and T's. Uh, but the, the bonds are actually sold in New York to mostly institutional investors, uh, big investors, state agencies, pension funds, some local buyers. Some, some folks from the community would have the opportunity to buy a $10,000 bond uh, for Cabrillo College. So interest rates right now, would be around two and a half to 2.75%. Mm -hmm. You know, our hope would be that the way the economy has been running, the interest rate environment has been running, we're gonna be in a good environment uh, for low interest rates then too. Okay. Yeah, Steve, coming from um, a question to you, uh, from an accounting uh, background, and, and certainly uh, being uh, kind of the, uh, the, the big cheese in charge of one of the biggest employers <laughs> in the county, uh, and, and you are a publicly traded company, uh, is that correct? No, that's the the other grant. Oh, sorry. We're not. Okay. 
And I apologize for that. <laughs> sorry, sorry, though. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, being um, uh, you know in a position of a chief financial officer uh, to be responsible to those folks that are the investors in the companies, anyways, um, you know, probably very similar. Uh, and I guess my question to you is, how do you see uh, being in the position that you've been in with Cabrillo uh, that, that the finances are handled? Uh, it, you know, as, as, would you rank it? Uh, you know, uh, if you could. And I guess where I'm trying to go with this is that I think our, our viewing audience needs to know that the money that come into Cabrillo are handled very well. Uh, they're managed well. When they have people like yourself that are on boards and committees, being able to oversee those kinds of things and doing the checks and balances, um, it's going where it's supposed to go. And so I think uh, uh, me as a, 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 a taxpayer, I want to know, okay, if I'm giving this and I'm going to vote yes on this, uh, uh, this bond, uh, I want to know that you know, we're, there's a responsibility side of that. And how, how would you assess that? Because you've been involved in the prior... Uh, foundation, uh, being the president of the foundation, as well as uh, some of the other bond issues that have gone through. Maybe give us some kind of parallel of how Cabrillo's doing things. Well, the parallel I'd, I'd use is probably more along the lines of the construction that Grant Rock does. Uh, so I, I believe Cabrillo's, uh, Matt can confirm this, is going to go out and get a construction manager. Mm -hmm. And they'll interview and vet that construction manager very well. And the construction manager's role is basically to uh, represent the college on a day-to-day -day basis and have the expertise in construction such that the project does not run over budget or if there are change orders that are, you know, is a change order legitimate or is it a contractor one of the, one of the things a contractor can do is he'll bid low mm -hmm. knowing that he can make change orders and a construction manager's job is to make sure those change orders are kept to a minimum and the uh, typically, a construction manager has a little latitude. He's got there's there's a contingency that he won't tell the contractor what it is, uh, but he's basically make, ensuring that those monies are spent wisely. And then I would hazard a guess, and again, this is this is maybe a mad question, but mm -hmm. there's likely to be a citizens oversight committee. There would be. Mm -hmm. So the citizen oversight sure. committee yep. is kind of looking over the shoulder of the construction manager mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you don't want the construction manager and the contractor to be buddy-buddy. Mm -hmm. You want them to have a respectful relationship where they both are, have the college's best interests in mind. Those sometimes are at odds, and uh, there may need to be some, uh, some, some uh, negotiation over that. But generally, that, uh, that contractor and that construction manager will work together to ensure that the college gets its bang for the buck and then circling back around behind and sort of keeping the construction manager on the even keel is this oversight committee is saying, well, you know, your bond specifically was to be used for this purpose. Mm -hmm. And if you went outside the lines of that, then the oversight committee is going to criticize you for it mm -hmm. because they want, they want to make sure that the money is being spent. So I, I, if... If, if you read the bond issue that's going to appear in the ballot pamphlet, it would be very specific and very detailed as to what the funds are used for. However, most people don't read that, but the oversight committee will read that. Okay. And they'll ensure that, it, that the, uh, the money is spent according to the terms of the, of the bond. Sounds like that there's a, a several layers uh, of accountability in place, and it sounds like you, uh, with, with being a, a beam counter, so to speak, and being an expert at what you do, you've seen that uh, ha has been very effective in past years with what Cabrillo has done. That's what I'm hearing from you, and, and so I think that's what the voters uh, would like to hear. How well, responsible? I, and I would say, I would go back and look at the past. Don't go back to 1960 when the college was built. Mm -hmm. We go back to the Visual and Performing Arts Center. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that project ran, ran over. That, that'd be a good question to ask, but mm -hmm. I don't believe that project ran over. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember any hue and cry back in 2004 and forward when those projects were going uh, forward that, mm -hmm. uh, that the project ran over budget. Mm -hmm. And so if the past is a predictor of the future, and it's not, mm -hmm. But because there's, there, there is a new sheriff in town, he, he's right here, and ultimately, even though Matt's not going to be uh, pounding the nails and uh, turning the screws. That's for sure. Yeah. But he's going to be, uh, he's the guy that uh, people are going to look to for mm -hmm. the ultimate accountability of the project. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've watched Matt for the last couple of years, and quite frankly, I think that 
uh, Cabrillo has one of the best presidents that we've ever had. I appreciate and, it. And he's got a track record, a very good track record of being able to do that at other institutions too. So uh, we would uh, assume that that's going to happen in the future if this bond goes through. It's going to be well managed. It's going to be looked at uh, very closely, and it's going to be spent like it's supposed to be spent. The money's going to be used for what it's supposed to be used for. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and that's, I think that instills a, a lot of confidence in, in the voters out there. And uh, one, one thing that, you know, we have to talk about is the percentage. When a, a bond goes through, it's not just a 50 percent, right? Correct. Uh, talk about that a little sure. bit. And uh, those are certainly challenges, for sure. There, there, there are. And uh, with uh, this kind of a bond for a local district, a school district like ours, it's a 55 percent bond that you have to get. Um, the last time that uh, Cabrillo went for a bond, I think they were just short, maybe a uh, 1,200 votes short. 1,200? 1,200 wow. votes, mm -hmm. yeah. That's close. So for, for us, um, with those 55% um, bond campaigns, there's always, as Steve was saying, there's always the, the requirement built into the um, code, state, state statutes that say you have to have a citizens oversight committee of, mm -hmm. of people who are appointed from various walks of life, mm -hmm. different parties, a taxpayer advocacy group, for example. Uh, and their sole function, as Steve was saying, is to make sure that the oversight, the expenditure of the funds is tied back to the ballot language mm -hmm. that was put before the voters initially. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, Lou, in your experience, you've been a Citizens Oversight um, yeah. uh, representative, so I want to thank you for that. I don't know if you were doing it, Steve, but I know you've been on the foundation and, mm -hmm. and dealing with Cabrillo's work there. So to both of you, I want to extend my gratitude for the on behalf of the college for the work you've done in the past. Well, and the way I saw it too, and actually we're uh, close to the end of our time, but um, the way I saw it, it was done exceptionally well uh, as an oversight committee member uh, for, the, for that bond back in 2004. Uh, and, and I felt like I was privileged to see that firsthand and, and uh, uh, some great things happened in, on the campus. But actually we are almost out of time. And if we could, uh, uh, just for a last, um, a last moment, if you could just give us maybe five or 10 seconds, something to remember this show by. This show? Uh, very proud to be the president of Cabrillo. I think as Steve was saying, it's an outstanding place. And as you've said, it's a gem. I couldn't think of a better place to be a president of a college right now. And the challenges and, and opportunities we have as a college are really quite stunning. It's gonna be a, a fun ride to be president now. Excellent, good. Yeah. Thank you so much. Steve, do we have another 30 seconds? Well, the, uh, the comment that I'd like to leave people with is that, and Matt unfortunately didn't get the chance to speak to it, is the funds that are gonna come into Watsonville. And there will be a public safety training center down there. And that's going to be a real benefit to the city of Watsonville, as well as our public safety people. And so I'm, I'm excited about that. Good. Good. Thank, you. Thank you. Steve Snodgrass, thank you for being here. Chief Financial Officer Matt Wettstein, uh, thank you for being here. President of Cabrillo College. Again, I'm excited uh, to have done another show uh, with such outstanding guests. And thank you for being here, gentlemen. Um, and it, uh, it sounds like I think uh, our, our staff was saying that they can they put their your contact information so they can connect mm -hmm. with you and uh, get with you if they have any other additional questions. But uh, as as usual, a great show, and um, it sounds like we've got some good things ahead of us for Real College. Uh, thank you for that. Appreciate it. Good.